Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, today we're going to talk about who's talking in Genesis 1. I thought the Lord put it on my heart to do a study about the Godhead. Now remember 2 Timothy 2.15 says, study to, or, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. One of the biggest things we do in this book, brothers and sisters in Christ, when you rightly divide, you, write, you, you look at who's talking and who they're talking to. Is it written directly to me? It, or is it written for me or to me? See, there's two different things. The whole Bible is written for us. But there are certain things in the Bible that are written to different dispensations, different periods, to different people in different time periods in the Bible. Okay? Today we no longer do animal sacrifices, but in the Old Testament they did. Okay? But we can learn from that why they did animal sacrifices. So it's written for our learning. Those things are written before time are written for our learning. But it's not written to us. That command for us to do animal sacrifice is not to us. So the whole Bible, we're always reading. If you're rightly dividing, you're looking at who's talking and who's it talking to. Okay? But today we're going to focus on who's talking. Okay? That's what the important thing is. So Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Reread. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And we've talked about this in other studies where it says our image. Okay, they all can claim the image of Jesus Christ. And we're going to get into some verses real quick. And our likeness, body, soul, and spirit. But there, for this study, the big push is, is that if it has pers uh, qualities of a person, and the world has perverted what that means. If they have a quality of a person, therefore it must be a person. Therefore, we can say God in three persons. Okay, now as we get through this, Godhead, the Bible of Godhead teaches God in the person of Jesus Christ. One person, Jesus Christ. See, today Catholicism has infiltrated all the Babel buildings and they're all pushing Trinity, 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 Trinity. And... That's not the, in the Bible. You ask them chapter and verse for Trinity in the Bible. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm going to bring up this. I got Peter Ruckman's studies here. I'm going to do a table of contents for a lot of the videos I've got for Peter Ruckman. So I have a booklet that I can look through. Um, Peter Ruckman believed in the Godhead of the King James Bible. He believed what he taught was God and the person of Jesus Christ. But he kept repeating Catholic jargon, if you want to say garbage, saying Trinity saying God in three persons, saying capital G God the Son, capital G God the, the, the Holy Spirit. He did not believe that God the Father had a body, soul, and spirit of his own, and that um, Jesus had a body, soul, and spirit of his own separate from God the Father, nor did he believe that um, the Holy Spirit had a body, soul, and spirit of his own separate from God the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ, the body. Okay, He taught the Godhead, God the Father, the soul, is the soul, and he's the one true God. There's only one God, God the Father. Then you have Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He's the body of God the Father. He's God manifest in the flesh. He's the physical image of God that we can see. And then you have the Spirit of God. God is a spirit, Spirit of God. Okay, he's the Holy Spirit. And Jesus in him, the body, dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. God the Father is in Jesus, the soul, and the Holy Spirit's in, in Jesus. That's what Peter Ruffman believed. When you step for Pax, all the, uh, the, uh, the Bible talks about being, um, I want to get this verse right, uh, spoiled. Spoiled is the word I'm looking for. Thank you, Lord. Spoiled by philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. He was spoiled a little bit by traditions of men and rudiments of the world with the Babel building system and he would repeat words that was popular but when he actually did the studies and you actually listen to his studies he didn't believe in the Trinity for one second if you actually sat down and talked to him okay person remember we did a whole study on this word study person in the Old Testament to the New Testament every time persons mentioned it's referred to someone who has a body and a soul and a spirit Body, soul, spirit. 
It's always referred to someone who's living. When the body dies, the soul leaves. We, look, we learn this. The ghost was in departing. Okay? Uh, the soul leaves at death. The spirit leaves at death, and all you have is an empty shell. Just the body. It's not a person anymore. They don't have a soul. They don't have a spirit. Right? But we see here, it says, And God said, God said, remember that, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowls of the air, and over the cattle, and over the earth, and over every creeping thing creepeth upon the earth. 1 Corinthians 15, 45, we read, And so it is written, The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Okay? Likeness of sinful flesh, the body talks about. How Jesus came in the likeness of sinful flesh so he could take on the sins of the world. If he didn't come in the likeness of sinful flesh, there's no way he'd ever be able to take on the sins of the world in an incorruptible body that he had in the Old Testament that we talked about. But here in Romans 8, 3, you don't have to turn there, it says, For that for what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin condemned sin in the flesh. God the Father sending his own Son. Notice how it never says God the Son. It never says that. It's the Son of God. Okay? Or Son, capital S. But never God the Son. You won't find that in Scripture anywhere. That's people that have been uh, spoiled by philosophy and vain deceit. After the traditions of men, after the rooms of the world come in with all these phrases and they start bringing things in saying, Oh, it's scripture. Oh, it's scripture. But you can't find it in scripture. God the Father sending his own Son. God came down in the likeness of sinful flesh. The Son of God is God the Father manifest in the flesh. Okay. Jesus is God. Capital G God, but He's God the Father. They're connected. They're one and the same. But let's keep going here. Because I don't want to get off. We've already talked about that in other studies. The main point is, is who is talking? Remember who's talking. First, Genesis 1.26 said, And God said, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the capital S, Spirit. Okay? Jesus took on the sins of the world. And the law has been fulfilled in us. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us through Jesus Christ. What God the Father did on the cross, sacrificing His body, His Son, Son, Son of God, the body, on the cross. That's why the Bible says, Feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. Now, God is not creating children from the dust of the ground. Okay? He created Adam and his image from the dust of the ground. Now, remember uh, John the Baptist was telling the uh, Pharisees, God is able from these, and the Jews at that time, that God is able from these stones to raise, seed, raise up seed of Abraham. Uh, God created animals one day with uh, dirt, the next day he created them with water. Or maybe I got it backward, they started with water and then dirt. And then he created them with water, if you keep reading the story of creation, and then he created them and, uh, with dirt when he was uh, creating them in front of Adam in the Garden of Eden. Okay? God can create whatever he wants. God can do whatever he wants. Okay? But just understand that after Adam... God was not creating people, men out of dirt. When we go back, our body comes from dirt. That's why when we die, we get buried. It, our body decomposes. It goes back to dirt. I understand that. I'm not denying that. But what you really got to understand is, is Adam was made in the image of God. And remember, image is a physical thing you can see. It's just talking about the body. People still, brethren, still slip up and say, mankind is made in the image of God. No, we are not. Adam was made in the image of God. Physical, his body was made in the image of God. He's a man, and his body was without sin. No sin was imputed to him, in other words. Okay, incorruptible. Now, that being said, 
uh, we are made in the likeness of God, body, soul, and spirit. God is not created to allow death to come. And in our lost state, we are the first Adam's condition. If you keep reading, it talks about how when Adam had his first child, that child was made in the image of Adam, in his image. Not in God's image, in his image. Adam was made in the image of God until he ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and fell. And he lost that image. Now we bear the image of Adam, the fallen state. When we are saved, born again, we are in the last Adam's condition. Romans 3.24 says, Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. We're in the last Adam. Remember what it read up there? It said the first Adam was made a living soul, but the last, second Adam was made a quickening spirit. When you get saved, now you're in the second Adams. Why? Because my soul is now connected to Jesus Christ. I bear His image. Now are we the sons of God. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, and old things are passed away, behold, things are all, all things become new. Remember that that image that it's talking about there, going off on a side note, that image was uh, the image of God, Jesus, the body. Adam was made in the image of Jesus, the body. And they all can claim that image because the Bible, we've done studies on this where God claims that image of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit claims the image of Jesus Christ. The body belongs to God the Father. It's His image. It's His person. Jesus is the person of God. Okay. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. People say, well, see, this justifies saying God the Son. No, it does not. The Word was God. God the Father and the body, Jesus Christ, are connected. They're one. Right? The Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and life, and that, and the life was the light of men. What are we talk about there in Genesis 1? God the Father is talking to the, the soul, is talking to the body, and talking to the Spirit, and saying, the Holy Spirit, and saying, let us make man in our image. They claim the same image as Jesus Christ, the body. After our likeness, body, soul, spirit. And in him was the life, and the life was the light of men. Jesus, the person of the Godhead, created which is why they all can claim in the Bible, claim I created, no, Jesus created, no, God the Father created, no, the Holy Spirit created. They all can claim it. The person of Jesus Christ created everything. He created mankind. He created Adam and he created Eve. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Remember the Bible says, They that are of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because you are not of God. The darkness comprehended it not. This isn't something that's so difficult. But some brethren have been deceived by the fact that, we're going to get to it eventually, but the fact that if it's got, per they've, dis they've destroyed what it means to, how do I say this, um, it has qualities of a person. Therefore it makes them a person. But they pervert what qualities are. And we're going to get into this. The true quality of a person is they have a body, soul, and spirit. That's the true quality of a person. Not that it can talk. Not that it can feel. Okay? Body, soul, and spirit. That's the qualities of a person. But today they've deceived you into believing that quality just means feelings. Feelings. Where do we get that a lot from false converts? It's all about feelings and opinions. Feelings and opinions. It's not about absolute truth. It's not about fact. Fact is, the true qualities of a person is body, soul, and spirit. And can body, soul, and spirit, I'm getting ahead of my, can they talk? Yes. Can they feel? Yes. Does that make them a person? No. If you don't have all three together, you're not a person. But we see there that Jesus Christ was the one that created everything. Colossians 1.12, giving thanks Unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, the image of Adam, 
and now translate us into the kingdom of his dear son. The image of the holy, Jesus Christ. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God. You can't see God the Father of the soul, but you can see Jesus Christ, the body. You can see my body right now, but you can't see my soul. You can't even see my spirit, but you can see my body. Okay? When my spirit talks, the Bible talks about God's laws are written on every man's heart. We did a study on this about um, uh, conscience, searing your conscience. Okay, Your spirit can talk and try to convict you. Your soul can talk. Your body can talk and try to tempt you. The flesh. Okay? But the image of the visible God is in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the body of God. I just want to really drive this home again before we get into the meat of this subject. The firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created and are in heaven that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Jesus Christ, the person of the Godhead, God the Father's in him, the Holy Spirit's in him, all three together in one person created everything. Created all things. There was only one time in, time in all of history of this book, only one time did the Godhead split up. Only one time. You say, when was that? On the cross. Right? And we did a study on this. I wanted to do a drawing, but uh, where we did the lines where it shows God the Father, the Son of God, the body, and the Holy Spirit, and you do a circle around it, they are one person. They're the person of the Godhead. They're on the cross. Now, God the Father is still in Jesus Christ while He's on the cross. That makes Him God. But that line that connects body and soul is disconnected. That's why Jesus said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He was trying to show us that God the Father, they severed the connection. So that, because sin cannot be in God's presence. Jesus was going to take on the sins of the world. And then he said, it is finished, and yielded up the ghost. So the Holy Ghost and the body severed their connection. They're still all together to make it one person until he actually dies. Then they separate. How does that work? I don't know. The biggest deception that I talked about in one of my oldest studies was that what confuses people is they keep trying to get in here and trying to explain how it works. I don't know how it works. I can only tell you what the Bible says what it is. The Bible says, great is the mystery of godliness. What you're going to find, brothers and sisters Christ, is you're going to get so confused in the Bible when it comes to the, uh, the Trinity, because the Trinity people keep trying to explain how it works. They want to be all-knowing. Mr. Smarty Pants. I know everything. I know how it works. Not just what it is, but how it works. And because the what it is doesn't make sense, we're going to pervert what it is to justify our definition of how it works to get them to line up. And they end up perverting the Word of God, because you can't understand the what it is in the Bible. Great is the mystery of Godliness. How is that possible? I remember we talked about, brothers and sisters of Christ, that we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Our soul is connected to Jesus Christ, which is the body. Where is Jesus Christ seated right now? In heavenly places. So now we are seated in heavenly places. Right? The body talks about how a soul can be in two places at once. God the Father is sitting on His throne, okay, running everything. The soul is sitting on the throne running everything. Okay? God the Father is also in Jesus Christ when He's on the earth, walking around, whether in the Old Testament or on the earth in the likeness of sinful flesh. When Jesus comes back at the day of the Lord, at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, God the Father's in Him. But God the Father is also still sitting on His throne. A soul can be in two places at once. How, can, how does that work? I don't know. I am not God, and I'm not going to pervert the Scriptures by trying to be smart and trying to understand everything. Okay, the Bible says great, in the, great is the mystery of godliness. Now, a body, a physical body, can only be in one place at any given time. Now, you look through the scriptures, even Jesus Christ, when he shows up in, in physical form, in the Old Testament, when he's on, on the earth in the likeness of sinful flesh, wherever his body was, that's one place. When he comes back and rules for a thousand years, uh, you see what I'm saying? A, body, a physical body can only be in one place at one time. They can be whooshed around. Remember Philip? 
And the eunuch, as soon as the eunuch came up out of the water, Philip, God took him and whooshed him whew, somewhere else. But he was not in two places at once. The body cannot be in two places at once. Okay? And then the Holy Spirit is omnipresent. It's everywhere. It's in me. It's in you if you're truly saved and born again. It's in all the brothers and sisters of Christ all over the world. It's everywhere. The Bible talks about how the Holy Spirit's convicting the lost world. It's out there. It's omnipresent. How can it be everywhere and yet be in me? Singular, me, singular, and yet be everywhere. I don't know how it works. I believe what is. I believe truth. I believe what the Bible teaches. And our problem is, brothers and Christ, that someone comes along with good words and fair speeches and starts deceiving the hearts of the simple. And I keep telling you, you don't want to be simple? Then you better be reading this book, King James Bible, God's Perfect Written Word for English-speaking people. You need to make sure you know this book so you don't get deceived. A lot of people let this book collect dust on the shelf somewhere. And you don't know this book like you should know this book. And someone comes along with good words and fair speeches. Well, they have the quality of a person, so we're going to say that makes them a person. And we're going to try to explain everything through our limited intellect. And we don't care if it goes against Scripture, but we're going to use good words and fair speeches. The Bible says there's only one God, period. You don't know that when the truth came to me, you don't know how insane it is, brothers and sisters Christ, for me to say God in three persons God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and then turn around and say, but I worship one God. No, you worship three gods. Oh, yeah, but they're one God. That's insanity. But that's men's wisdom. Remember, Jews were to seek after a sign. Uh, Gentiles, the Greeks, seek after wisdom. That's the wisdom of men. What has God made the wisdom of men? as nothing. We need to trust the word of the Lord. There is no capital G God the Son. There's only capital G God the Father. Colossians 2.6 says, And as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him, rooted and built up in Him, established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding there, therein with thanksgiving. Beware, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Brothers, this is Christ. Just real quick, get over it. Godhead. Godhead. What is the Godhead? Body, soul, spirit. God the Father is the soul. Some of the brethren are making mistakes by saying it's, it's God in three parts. No, it isn't. Okay? God the Father is the soul. That's God. The body. God speaks to us through the body. That's why you have capital W word. Jesus is referred to as the capital W word. And you have the spirit of God. God speaks through us through the, the, his body, through his son, Jesus Christ. And he speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible says, what he heareth, that shall he speak. The Holy Spirit only speaks what God the Father tells him. God the Father speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. He opens the lowercase w word to us by the Holy Spirit. The one true God is the soul, seated in heaven. Okay? And he speaks to us through his Son, Jesus Christ. He speaks to us through his Spirit. God is the Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. Okay? Don't fall into the trap of getting... Uh, spoiled by philosophy and vain deceit. Oh, no, no, it's got to be God in three persons. The Godhead is God the Father. There's only one God. 1 Corinthians 8, 6. But there, to us, there's but one capital G, God the Father. And that verse has been ignored. I, I remember one guy once tried to explain it away and make it out like it's not really what it meant. And he was just totally perverting the Word of God, totally turning his back on absolute truth. But to this day, they ignore that verse, the Trinitarians. For the most part, they pretend like that verse doesn't exist. There is but to us but one capital G God, the Father, of whom are all things. Right? Capital G God. The Son, the Word, is God, and He created all things. The Holy Spirit quickeneth and makes things alive. He creates things. They all claim it. But the Godhead is God the Father, which is the soul. The Son of God the Father, 
the body. They're connected. Now, real quick, I'm not getting on to our brother in Christ. He says skin suit. I heard Peter Ruckman, I've got his videos, one of his videos he talks, he says skin suit. I'm not against, I'm not, I understand what those brothers are talking about. They're talking about Jesus as the body. But be careful about saying skin suit all the time because the Bible says when Jesus came down, they thought he was a ghost. They thought he was a spirit. Ghost, spirit. And he said, a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have. So the true definition of what the body is is not skin suit. The true definition of what the body is is flesh and and bones. Okay? The flesh and bones is the suit for the soul, if you want to say that. Okay? It's flesh and bones. But I understand what those brothers are talking about, so please don't get in a fight over, over words. Strife about with words. Please be careful. Okay? My thing is, is, I don't say skin suit because the body teaches that the flesh, I mean the Bible, the body, the Bible teaches that the body is flesh and bones, not skin flesh and bones, okay? Be careful with that, okay? But I'm not against that. Don't argue, get into a fight over, like, strife about with words that, to no profit, to no profit. Sometimes people are adding the word, like, capital T Trinity for a title for God. That's worth fighting over. That's not my God. I don't believe in the pagan trinity. I believe in the Godhead of the King James Bible, all right? But strife about with words, like using the word Bible, using the word Christian, which is in the Bible, be careful about striving towards to no profit. Be very careful. Okay? But we also need to have grace. I have grace for Peter Ruckman. I think Brother Brad says skin suit. I have grace. I know what they're talking about because I study the Word of God. It's like they're talking about Jesus being the body for the soul. The soul's inside. Being a body for the spirit. The spirit's inside. This body right here is a suit for my soul. My soul is inside. You can't see it. Okay? Flesh and bones. Okay. But Son of God is the Father, Jesus Christ, which is the body. Spirit of God the Father, which is the Holy Spirit, that Spirit and that Son have a connection to God. That's how it works. God the Father speaks to us through His Son. He speaks to us through His Spirit. Despite what the Lord... Uh, see. That shall, with the Holy Spirit, that, that shall he hear, that shall he speak. What he hear, that shall he speak. God tells him what to say, and he says it. He's speaking through him, the Holy Spirit. Okay, 1 Corinthians 8, 6 says, But to, the third, but to us there is but one God, and the Father of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. One soul, God the Father, and one body of God the Father, Jesus Christ. Jesus warned that there would be many antichrists out there. Uh, the man of sin, the, the beast, the son of perdition. It's going to be a counterfeit. Okay, They're going to try to teach you that there's gods, plural. I remember uh, uh, Daniel, when you read about Daniel, when God revealed the dream to him about the statue, the head of gold, the chest of sil the uh, shoulders and chest of silver, and then bronze, or iron, and then bronze and part or bronze and iron and iron miry clay. But when he's doing this, he says, Daniel says, God, singular, showed me this. It's nothing wisdom that I have. And then you have Nebuchadnezzar, and he says, Wow, your gods must be great to reveal you. It's like he just went one year out the other. Just in one year and out the other. The lost world keeps saying gods, 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 gods. And here we are saying God, singular, God, singular. Why is it the lost world can't handle one God? Because Satan doesn't want him to have one true God. Satan is the lowercase g God of this world, and he's the one that has dominion right now in this world, the kingdom of man. He doesn't want men to have one capital G God. But the Bible teaches, but there to us there is but one capital G God, the Father. And you can't get away from that. Back to Genesis 1.26, And God said... Who is speaking? God the Father is speaking, I believe. The body, soul, and spirit can speak. What is confusing, brethren, on Godhead? God in the person of Jesus Christ is we are told that the body, soul, and spirit itself has the qualities of a person, therefore it makes them a person. No, it does not. 
because they pervert what the qualities are. If the quality of a person is body, soul, and spirit, then you're absolutely right. If it has all three qualities, not just one, well, it has a spirit like an animal, has a spirit, therefore it must be a person. Well, does it have a body and a soul? No, it has a body, but it doesn't have a soul. Animals don't have souls. They have a body and they have a spirit. They're not a person. Okay? They have to have all three of the true qualities that the Bible defines as a person. Body, soul, and spirit. But they'll say, no, no, if it talks, that's a quality of a person, therefore it, it has to be a person. Let's take a look at the soul. Psalms 11.1. Psalms 11.1. 1. In the Lord put I my trust. How say ye to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? How do you say to my soul? You mean you can talk to a soul and the soul can talk back? Oh yeah. Moses, this is just a soul. No body, no spirit, just the soul. Luke 12.19 says, and I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Thy soul. You mean a soul can eat? There's another. That's a quality of a person. Only a person can eat. That's not the true qualities of what a person is. Animals can eat. Plants can eat. You know, bugs can eat. You know, I keep going. But they'll try to say that. See right there? It says right there, take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. So you can talk to a soul, a soul can talk back, and it can eat. Therefore, it's got to be a person. So we can say God in three persons. Eh, wrong. Like I said, is a tree a person? No, but it eats. Animals are persons? No, but they eat and they speak. They talk. They talk in their own language, and some animals can even speak English. Birds can be trained to talk in English. I was watching a, a, a video about, I forget the type of bird, but there's birds that can be taught to speak English. Does that make them a person? No, it does not. What are the true qualities of a person? Body, soul, and spirit. And we taught, I said, I'm doing this video because I promised the brethren that I'd do a video explaining souls can talk. Without a body, without a spirit, the souls can talk. And what we learned from there is soul can eat. Yeah. How does that work? I don't know. Great is the mystery of Godliness. We're made in His likeness. When I eat, my, the Bible talks about you want true food for the soul? You want true food for the soul? It's right here. The bread of life. God's Word. Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. I hope I'm saying that right, but out of the mouth of God. You mean that God's words here, when you study the Word of God, and you memorize them and you hide them in your heart, your soul, it's food for the soul? Oh yeah. Does that make your soul a person by itself? No, it does not. It has to have all three qualities of what the Bible calls a person. Body, soul, and spirit. Lamentations 2.12 says, They say to their mother, Where is corn and wine? When they swooned as the wounded in the streets of the city, when their soul was poured out unto their mother's bosom. Your soul is being poured out. How many times have you heard that before? Your soul gets just so anguished that you just starts pouring out the, the pain that you're going through and the anguish, and you can talk through the, through the body, and it can be verbal. But it's your soul coming through the body, and it's an anguish. The soul can talk. The body can physically talk. Does that make them individually a person? No. Genesis 27, 4 says, And make me savory meat such as I love, and bring it to me, that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. This is Isaac. Abraham, Isaac, getting ready to bless uh, supposed to be blessing um, uh, Esau, but Jacob comes in. Okay, But my soul may bless you? Oh, that's something only a person can do. See how they try to pervert everything? When you get into this, if you don't know the Bible, and you don't know, okay, a person, the true qualities of a person is body, soul, and spirit. 
then someone can come along and say, well, it has qualities of a man. It does what you can. It can eat. It can speak. It can feel. Therefore, these are qualities of a person. No, it isn't. The true qualities of a person is body, soul, and spirit. But here, his soul may bless you. Leviticus 5.4, we read, Or if a soul swear, speaking, but swear, pronouncing with his lips to do evil or to do good, whatsoever it be that a man shall pronounce with an oath, if it be hid from him when he knoweth of it, then he shall be guilty in one of these things. How can it be hidden? Because your soul's saying it. Remember, um, let's see if I get the whole mixture of Job. Remember Job. When he was doing animal sacrifices for his children, he said, per se, that they said in their, they cursed God in their heart, the soul. They didn't do it out loud where you can see it visual, that the body is visual. It's the visual image of God, Jesus Christ, the visual image of God, the body. So he didn't cuss openly, but the soul might have cussed, cursed God. That's why he did it. Okay, here we see it. Or if a soul swear. Well, therefore, it must make him a person. No, it does not. A soul can speak. A soul can feel. A soul can eat. We just read that soul can eat. You want to feed your soul proper food? The Word of God. Or you can feed it junk food? The world. The words of the world. The wisdom of men. Or the wisdom of God. What's it going to be? Okay. Does that make your soul a person apart from your body and your spirit? Absolutely not. I'm only a person because I have a body, soul, and spirit. A good example of this is Samuel. 1 Samuel 1.9. 1 Samuel 1.9. This is Samuel's mom being vexed. Oops, went too far. Her soul is vexed. First Samuel. It shouldn't be hard. It's 1 9. I kept thinking 10. It's 1 9. First Samuel 1 9. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli, the priest, sat upon a seat by the post of the temple of the Lord, and she was in Bitterness of soul. Her soul was bitter. And prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. You know how you can feed this body. You can give this body enough rest. You can really take care of this body where your body feels great. But all of a sudden something happens to vex your soul and you're just miserable. And you're like, why am I miserable? I've eaten. I've slept good. I, I, my body's fine. I'm not sick. But you just feel awful. Right? Bitterness of soul. Verse 11. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid, then remember me and not forget thine handmaid. No, it says, and she vowed a vow. Or if a soul swear. She vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man-child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of, of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart. You know, just a little side note, there's... there's I'm sorry, they're wicked devils. There's no other way to say it. They're servants of Satan. They're vile. They're serpents. They're trying to tell you that prayer is not part of sal the plan of salvation. That you don't have to ask God to save you. You don't have to confess that you're a sinner on your way to hell and that you deserve to go to hell for sinning against God and you need help and it was God that saved you. Jesus Christ saved a wicked, wicked man like me. You don't have to tell it, Lord, thank you. I'm a sinner, a dirty, rotten cylinder. I was on my way to hell, and Lord, you saved me by the death of your son. By your blood, my sins are washed clean. His death, burial, and he raised the third day, proving that you, he is God fully and completely. God, you saved me. 
God, please save me. I can say now, God, save me, but at salvation, God, please save me. They're trying to tell you that you don't have to, and one of the things they use to hide that is that what if someone can't physically speak? How Then they can't get saved because, you know, you guys say you have to have prayer, and you do. Prayer, it says, for in the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. God will not save anyone that from the heart will not call out to him and say, Lord, save me. He won't do it. What we see here, she spake from the heart. But does that make the soul a person? No. But she spake from the heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. The body wasn't heard. The soul was the one doing the praying. How many of you get to earnest prayer where you bow your head and you're talking? You think you're talking in your head, but it's your soul talking, but you're not talking out loud. That's what's going on here. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long will thou be drunken? Put away from, put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, my, No, my lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. Now stop there. Another little side note real quick, brothers of Christ. Have you noticed how when drunk people get really drunk and their flesh is just blah, blah, and they're like Eli thought she was, their soul is so vexed. I mean, for you to get to the point where you're a drunkard, your soul is so vexed. How is it when she's very vexed and she's there and she's praying, it almost looks like a drunk person. And Eli mistakes her for a drunk person. Uh, this world, brother, says Christ, there's a lot of people out there that I just thought it was interesting that when they're drunk, lost people that are drunk, it's because their soul is very vexed. They're miserable. They have no hope, no God, and no hope. Remember what Bible says? We were without hope and without God in the world, past tense. But now we have God in us, Jesus Christ. God the Father in us, through Jesus, through the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit in us. No, we have Jesus in us. No, we got God in us. They're all connected. We have the Holy Spirit in us. Okay? But they're miserable because they don't have God and they don't have hope. And when you get very vexed in your spirit, what's going on is, is you're starting to lose sight of God. And you're starting to lose sight of hope. Be careful, brother says Christ, that when you get vexed, you know the when your soul gets really vexed, gets really down, you know what the solution is? Do a Bible study. Read the Word of God. Read the precious promises that God's given us in here. Re read over the Gospel again, what Jesus Christ did for us. Get your eyes back on Jesus. Get that hope renewed. Okay? I don't want to get into too much, but there's brethren trying to steal people's hope. Trying to get them to take off their helmet for a hope of salvation. Look, start looking at the precious promise. Remember, you're supposed to be looking for Jesus Christ to come back any day now. Every day, you're supposed to be looking for Jesus Christ with the life you're living. When you start getting vexation of soul and spirit, it's because you're taking your eyes off Jesus Christ. You're letting someone take your eyes off Jesus Christ. It's happened to me. But I'm a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thine handmaiden for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. Now the reason, real quick, this God just put it in my heart. Peter Ruckman, in his testimony, after he got saved, alcohol went away. Like that. He quit cigarettes. Like that. They, but mainly the alcohol. Why? Because when he got saved, he had hope. He was with God, and he had hope. That's why one of the things we say, brothers, the fruits of someone who's truly saved is that one of the things God's going to get out of your mouth is, uh, is cursing. He's going to get uh, alcohol out of your life really fast. Maybe not like right away, but he's going to get it out of your life pretty fast. These are things that God's going to get out of your life because your soul 
is not going to, when, you, when your soul and you're lost and your soul gets so anguished and vexed, it's the end of the world, it turns to alcohol. It turns to the worldly things to try to cope with it. But when you get saved, you turn to Jesus Christ when you get vexed. She was praying to God. When I get vexed, I start praying to God and get my eyes on God. Do Bible studies, sing some hymns, pray and talk with them. That's who I go to when I get vexed. When I have vexation of spirits, my soul, right? vexation of soul. Matthew 3, 17 says, And lo, a voice from heaven, because here's where we're going to get in the meat of it. They say, the voice came from heaven, and Jesus was speaking. How can they both, how can Jesus be God the Father when God speaking to him from heaven? Matthew 3, 17, And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Matthew 17, 5 reads, While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. The body can speak, and the soul can speak. Why is that complicated? God the Father, who is sitting in heaven, the soul is in heaven, but the soul is also inside Jesus Christ. It can be in two places at once. God the Father speaks from heaven, the soul, and then the soul speaks through Jesus Christ, the body, and you hear the body speak. Why is that complicated? I'll tell you why it's complicated. Because you can't figure out how he does it. And I'll tell you this right now. I have no clue how God does it. Great is the mystery of godliness. That's where you get thrown, thrown for a loop and start going astray, is when they try telling you you have to know how it works. No, you need to be faithful to the, uh, the mysteries of God, as the Bible talks about. You need to be faithful to the mysteries. That's a mystery. I don't know how God can speak from heaven. I know the soul is in heaven, and I know the soul is in Jesus Christ, the body. But I know a soul can speak in heaven, and I know the body can speak, Jesus Christ, here on earth. They both can speak. 2 Peter 1.17 says, For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the, from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. God says it in a way that we can understand. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's the body. It's God manifest in the flesh. I'm pleased. The soul is saying, This is my body of whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Because they didn't believe Jesus was God, fully and completely. Jesus is God, fully and completely. The soul can speak, the body can speak, a spirit can speak. Let's get into that. Let's talk about the spirit now. So we know a soul, it can get hungry, it can get vexed, it can feel, okay? it, it, uh, it can speak. What about the spirit? John 16, 13. John 16, 13. A good one. John 16, 13. Now remember the Holy Spirit, when he hears, that shall he speak. He can only speak what God the Father tells him to speak. He doesn't speak independent from God the Father. But a spirit can speak. Okay. John 16, 13. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of Truth, it's capital S. Spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He will not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. 1 Timothy 4.1 This really throws people for a loop. 1 Timothy 4.1 Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. God and three person, that's a doctrine of devils. I don't serve three gods. I serve one person, it's a God, singular, Jesus Christ. He's the God, singular. Remember um, Daniel, uh, the three men that were in the fiery furnace. You have... Um, the king there, he's looking into the furnace, he says that there's a fourth person, and that person's like unto the Son of God. The Bible versions don't like that. They change it. 
They don't like that that was Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. God in one person. They like their persons plural. They like their gods plural. They, they'll give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy. There are brethren that got mad at me because of that whole cult of personality. I'm of this person. I've got to follow this person. And he says the Trinity's truth. And they got angry. I had brethren that got angry at me and were mean to me <laughs> in comments. And I just, I, I, I hopefully I planted a seed when I was telling them the truth about the Godhead. And that, you know, capital T Trinity is not in Scripture. God the Son is not in Scripture. God the Holy Spirit is not in Scripture. God in three persons is not in Scripture. Jesus Christ is the only one referred to as a person in the Bible four times. And they got mad at me and they were mean. But a month or two later, some of them came back and said, I apologize. You were right. I just, I, I've been so used to, we have to defend the Trinity. It's, 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 it's the, it's the fund, foundation, it's the most fu fundamental part of the faith. And you get that from Catholicism. And they, they, we have to fight for it. We have to fight, fight. So my first thought, my first reaction was, i got to fight, fight, fight. But when they calmed down and started doing the study for themselves because they had the love of the Word, they started realizing, you know what? You were right. It's the Godhead. And I need to start following the Scriptures and God, the bread of life, and God's wisdom, not man's wisdom. And I need to have faith in the mysteries. And I need to stop having this false this desire put in me to have to know how it works. No, you don't need to know how it works. You need to have faith in what it is. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. You have some, though, that wouldn't, uh, their conscience is seared with a hot iron because this isn't their final authority. They, no, when it says conscience seared with a hot iron, their spirit tells them, hey, there's some truth to what he's saying. Capital T Trinity is not in the scriptures as a title for God. That's truth. That's a fact. There's truth in what he's saying. You need to listen to that man and do the study for yourself. But they're seared with the, their hot conscience is seared with the hot iron. They don't listen to their spirit. And you can quench the Holy Spirit. So you have false converts that are showing their true colors, but you can also have brethren that are falling away to being spoiled by philosophy and vain deceit. Going off of words of men. And it's not just limited to the Godhead. <laughs> there was other reasons, other things recently that caused problems in the body of Christ because men are going after traditions, worldly things, and they're turning their back on the Word of God. They don't, they can't handle what the words of God say. But the conscience seared with a hot iron. Three, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Fornication is being pushed. Don't get married. Just live together and. Um, fornicate, and you can have multiple partners. Who You don't need to get married. And meats, okay? It says meats plural. There's certain meats. They're still trying to tell you to stay away from certain meats, okay? Uh, some pushes all meat. You need to stay away from all meat. But whether it's certain meats or all meats, okay? But the point of this is, is the Spirit speaketh expressly? You mean the Holy Spirit talks? Well, yeah. The Holy Spirit talks to me and opens the scriptures to me. God the Father shows me his word through the Holy Spirit. Opens his word to me through the Holy Spirit. Romans 9, 1 we read, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. My conscience also bearing witness. You know your spirit can bear witness with the Holy Ghost? Yeah. Romans 8, 16, the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So a spirit can bear witness, and when you bear witness, it's like a testimony. You get up there before the judge, you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You're a witness, okay? Now, spill it. Tell us your witness. Talking. The spirit can talk. Does that make the spirit a person? Absolutely not. Be careful. Nor the true qualities of a person is body, soul, and spirit. Okay, the body. Exodus 4.10. Exodus 4.10. The body. And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither hitherfore nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. But I am slow of speech, and am slow of tongue. 
And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Who and who maketh the dumb, or the deaf, or the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thee, with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. Some people have a hard time physically speaking in front of other people. But this is body. Can the body speak? Yes, they can. Romans 10.1 we read, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them worker that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness. So a, a body can talk, a body can work, a body can feel. Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for the righteous to everyone that believe. For Moses described the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this, this wise, Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? The soul. That is to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. I apologize. Victoria has a cone of shame on. She had some work done on her face. So I didn't mean to, I know it's getting in the way, but she's making some noises trying to figure out that helmet. But, uh, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, body and soul. That is the word of faith which we preach. That thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. But remember, the soul can speak. Okay? The, the soul has a mouth. The body has a mouth. I just want to read that verse again. So the body can speak, for those who can speak, and if you can't verbally speak, your soul will speak. But it's required for salvation that you call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Future tense. Which means the calling upon the name of the Lord comes before God saves you. But the body can talk. Uh... The body, soul, and spirit can feel. Here's some verses we're just going to run through them real quick just to show that the body can feel, uh, the soul can feel, and the spirit can feel. Job 7 11, we read, Therefore I will not refrain my mouth. I will speak in the anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. Spirit's anguished, soul is bitter. Feelings. Does that make him a person? No. Remember, Brother Christ, Sister Christ, what are the qualities of a person? A person must have a body and a soul, and it's always referred to someone who is living. Spirit. Someone who is dead is not called a person because the spirit has left, the soul is left. It's just a body. It's one-third of a person. Okay? But it's not a complete person if it doesn't have all three. Jeremiah 4.31 we read, For I have heard a voice as of a woman in travail, and the anguish as of her that bringeth Forth her first child, the voice of the daughter of Zion, that bewailed herself, that spread her hands, saying, Woe is me, for my soul is wearied because of murderers. Soul is wearied. Psalm 16.10 says, For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, nearly without suffer thine holy one to see corruption. What this is talking about, King David is talking about the Abraham's bosom. Okay? But we know that when you go to hell... The, the fiery side of hell, your soul can feel. We just read it. Your soul can feel things. You're going to be burned. If you don't get saved, we're saved, brother says Christ. We get to go to heaven. But those who don't get saved and end up winding in hell and into the lake of fire, the soul can feel for all eternity. There's some studies saying that you get a physical body like a worm, so you have a physical body and your soul, and you're down there burning for all eternity. But remember, a soul can feel Okay. You don't need that body, but I'm not saying that's not true about you know some of those teachings that are pretty good. But a soul can feel on its own. Matthew 10, 28. Okay. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. 
See, there's a verse there that says soul and body. So you have a body in hell somewhere. But destroy soul and body. And notice here the key word is, is it says kill. Up here on earth it's kill. But down there it's destruction. It's constant destruction. You're being destroyed for all eternity. But he doesn't use the word kill. Able to kill both soul and body in hell. He didn't use the word kill. He used the word destroy. It's very important. But your body can be, your soul and your body can feel pain and be constantly destroyed for all eternity. Matthew eight twelve. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Your soul goes down to hell and your soul has teeth. Yeah. Your soul that's inside you is almost a perfect shape as your body. But you can only see the body because the body is physical, the soul isn't. But it can feel. Matthew 13, 50 says, And shall cast them into a furnace of fire, there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Yet again. Matthew 22, 13, Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The soul can feel. The body can feel. The spirit can feel. Matthew 24, 51 says, And shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be wail, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Talking about hell. That's what we know that's talking about hell. Matthew 25, 30, And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Luke 13, 28, There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and ye yourselves thrust out. Brothers and Christ, it's a serious thing. It's one thing to be confused and messed up, and you believe in the Godhead of the King James Bible. And I know a lot of you, brothers and Christ, believe in the Godhead of the King James Bible and still use Catholic terms like Trinity. But when you sit down and talk with you, you do not believe what the Trinity truly teaches. You do not truly believe God in three persons. <coughs> you don't. You don't believe God the Father has a body, soul, and spirit of His own. You don't believe Jesus Christ has a body and soul, spirit of His own, separate from God the Father and the Holy Spirit. And the same thing with the Holy Spirit. You don't believe that, but that's what God in three person means. You can't pervert absolute truth. When you say God in three persons, you're saying God the Father has a body, soul, and spirit of His own. Jesus has a body, soul, and spirit of His own, separate from God the Father and the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit has a body, soul, and spirit of His own, separate from the Son and God the Father. When you say God in three persons, that's what that means. You say, but I don't believe that. I know that, brother says Christ, praise God that you don't believe that. But there are Catholics that believe that. The lost world believes that. They believe in gods. It's always got to be gods plural. Gods plural. It can't be God singular. It has to be gods plural. Okay. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye curse into everlasting fire. Prepare for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. Naked, and you clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and you visit me not. Then shall they answer him, saying, Lord, when shall thee a hungered, or a thirst, or stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, did not, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Insomuch as ye did not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment. Oh no, hell is just a grave. Hell is just a grave. Everlasting. See, people don't understand. One of the key things that God put on my heart for this ministry is that words have meaning. It says everlasting punishment. If it's just annihilation, if it's just the grave, how is that everlasting punishment? But the righteous into life eternal. If the hell is just the grave, if hell is just annihilation, then heaven is just one second, you get to enjoy heaven for one second, and you're done. Now you're nothing. People, oh no, that's not true. They're ter that's, if you do the opposite of everlasting punishment, then you have to do the opposite of righteous unto life eternal. No, it's not life eternal, and it's not everlasting punishment. You see how that works? But they want to keep the everlasting life, but they don't want to keep the everlasting punishment. 
That's what hell is. When your soul goes down there, it's everlasting punishment. Your soul can feel, but it doesn't make you a person. Your soul is in hell, and there might be a body for you in hell, but there's no spirit. You're down there suffering everlasting punishment, constant destruction, being destroyed by God the Father for all eternity. Okay. Another thing, just a little side note, they always, they always try to say the he or she. The he, if it says he or she, that, that means it's a person. Proverbs 1.20 Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. Is wisdom a person? No, it isn't. Proverbs 9.1 Wisdom hath builded her house. She hath hewn out her seven pillars. It said her. Does that make it a person? Wisdom a person? No, it doesn't. So, brother, says Christ, be careful. Body, soul, spirit is the qualities of a person. So when someone comes along and says, well, it, the Holy Spirit ha can talk, therefore that makes it a person, you know better now to say, uh, no, it doesn't. It has to have a body, soul, and spirit to be considered a person. Those are the true qualities of a person. What you're doing is worldly, um, perverting uh, rhetoric. Lies. You're promoting lies. Either you're promoting them or you're... The Bible talks about deceiving and being deceived. You've either been deceived and you're passing on that deception, or you're purposely trying to deceive me. A lot of people are just passing on the deception because they're repeating parrots, PWCs. They're just parroting what they've been told. And they don't stop to study for themselves and think for themselves to say, Hey, wait a second. That really doesn't make any sense. The true qualities of a person is body, soul, and spirit. Just because they can talk, just because they can feel... Just because they get hungry and they can eat does not make them a person. You need a body, soul, and spirit to be a person. So please, brothers and sisters, Christ, those who are still that believe as I do, they believe in the Godhead of the King James Bible, but you're still using Trinity terms, get those Trinity terms out of your vocabulary. Stick with the Word of God. Stick with absolute truth. The real food, the good food. Stay away from the junk food. The real food for your soul, right here, the King James Bible. Stick with the Word of God. Ignore man's wisdom when it goes against the Word of God. Okay? So grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Keep hiding this in your heart, feeding your soul, and keep living it with your body. Soul, feed your soul, and with your body. Don't let it just be head knowledge. Soul, and your body lives it. Okay? So, I will see you in the next study, and I pray that all the brothers and sisters in Christ are doing great out there in these last days, and that you're keeping your eyes on Jesus Christ. And He'll fine-tune you, like He did me, and had a brother in Christ that fallen away, but when He was in a standing position, that taught me the truth. And I started verifying it through the Scriptures, and said, hey, He lines up with the Scriptures. I need to line up with the scriptures. That's what I'm doing for you, brother, says Christ, trying to get you to line up with the scriptures, not with the world. That's what caused that brother and I to lose fellowship, because I tried to get him to line up with the scriptures, not the world. He chose the world. What is it? The Bible says, Paul says, Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, being part of a club, Spoiled by philosophy and vain deceit after the rudiments of the after traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ, capital W word. Then you have the lower case, lower case W word. This is the true food. Stay in the word, brothers. This Christ. Stay in the word in these last days. People are dropping like flies, fall, becoming part of the falling away, and giving into this world, and they're not doing much for the Lord. They're not reading the Bible as much. They're not serving the Lord as much. Some of them are actually hindering the work of the Lord because they've given into the world. Brother says, Christ, hide this in your heart. We did that study, you know, the perfect heart. What does it mean to have a perfect heart? This is perfect, and Jesus Christ is perfect. Are they both in your heart? Are you living them? Are you living for Jesus Christ, and you're living His Word? That's how you're perfect before God, because of His Word and because of Jesus Christ, His Son, the body of the Godhead. So I'll say it again, grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.